So I, I know on social media, it becomes a funny thing that, you know, fans are fans and they're going to pile on and Florida State lost and aren't they silly and, you know, we, we can make fun of them and so forth. But in terms of a real uh, evaluation, not just that game, but the Florida State program, do you take much away from that just being a singular, hey, they didn't get the job done. Maybe they look past them. I hate to go to that uh, bullet point. They looked past them. But uh, in terms of the the, you know, the the overreaction of, you know, the, the sky's falling on Florida State. Well, first of all, and I, I talked about this in the show earlier, I, I remember this team from Columbus, Ohio, about, about 10 years ago, uh, early in the year at home against a very mediocre ACC team called Virginia Tech, got thumped by two touchdowns at home. And sky is falling, no chance to be in the playoff. They're going to miss the first ever playoff. And I do remember that team making the playoff after they won the eight Big Ten title game 59 to nothing. And then didn't they win a couple games in the postseason, right? Like, so, so we should definitely never make overreactions one way or the other, right? It, it, you know, just like you know, some, oh man, that Georgia Tech's going to be a handful. It's one game, right? Like, it's one game. First of all, that was our trap game talk all offseason. So I'm not shocked by it. But it's one game. Let's see how they respond. The, the, the only reason that I have a little bit of concern coming out of that game, if I'm a Florida State guy, it's not that they lost. It's not that they were sloppy. I expected the 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 pass game to take some time to get going. I don't think the receivers are that good. DJ is going to need some time to kind of get into that flow of that offense. I thought they'd run the ball well. They look like they're going through the first drive. Very experienced offensive line coming back. Both tackles are returners. Your center is a returner. I think two of those guys were preseason first team all ACC players. The big concern for me was that they got physically whipped in the trenches on both sides of the ball. That's what concerned me that their offensive line had no answers for what Georgia Tech was doing after that first series. Now, the the asterisk for me is that there was no Alex Atkins on the sideline of that game. He's their OC and their offensive line coach. He was suspended for the game. Is that why? Or is this just not a very tough football team? That's going to be the thing we have to find out because if Florida State's going to get this thing turned around, Mark, they don't have Keon Coleman to throw the ball to anymore. They don't have Johnny Wilson to throw the football to anymore. They're going to need to, to execute better where they can't just rely on big, tall, freaky receivers. They can just kind of throw the ball up to like they did at times last year. The ACC is getting better. It's getting more athletic. Georgia Tech's an example of that. You're going to have to play better. And if Florida State's getting whipped in the trenches on both sides of the ball like they did against Georgia Tech, this won't be the last time that happens. We just need to see if if that Alex Atkins effect is the reason why or is there a deeper problem at Florida State? Because if it was just about, hey, we didn't have our OC, we didn't have our own line coach, we didn't have the guy pushing the right buttons to get us turned around, okay, fine, you fix it and you go out and win some football games. But if there's a deeper problem here of why this team – not only got whooped in the trenches, but there was no counter punching from Florida State. Like once Georgia Tech started whooping, it was like, well, I guess this is kind of what it is. And if it's not for two great fourth down throws by DJ in the fourth quarter, that game may have been a 10 point plus game, Mark. I mean, it really could have been. That, that That's the concern for me. It's if you don't execute if the timing, you can fix all that. But when your issue is we just got our butts kicked and we didn't punch back and we didn't counter, that's a bigger red flag for me than – simply just losing a football game. That's going to be something they're going to have to get fixed real fast. College football is even more exciting with some action on the line. And the games are even better when you're cashing in. And the voice of college football is the place to be to get the greatest value. Let's start with my picks. 75% against the money line, 58% against the spread. I've got a 40-year track record. In fact, in 2023, at $100 played per game, you would have netted over $9,300. And guess what? I'm just the warm up act. Steve Merrill, our ace in the hole, show stopper from Wager Talk, six years with the voice of college football, over 30 years in the industry. Steve gives us analysis on all the big games, but you can't miss Steve's weekly under the radar pick, which went 21 and 5 against the spread the last two seasons. I repeat, 21 and 5 against the spread. You also get picks from some of our top analysts here at the Voice of College Football, including Steve Dace and Matt Zemick. Become a YouTube channel member or Patreon member for just $99 per month. Go to the main channel on YouTube, click join, and select the betting tier. Do the same thing on Patreon. Make 2024 a winner now. 